The next morning, I felt that we should leave Venezuela as soon as possible. The junta members were pleading that I attend the luncheon. They had planned in my honor that afternoon, and they guaranteed they would deliver me safely to the airport immediately afterwards. I accepted their inv invitation, even though I still had trepidations about their ability to maintain security from the moment they arrived at the embassy to escort me to the luncheon. However, I realized that my fears had been unnecessary. It looked as if they had come to declare war. Rather than take me to lunch, the courtyard was filled with tanks and jeeps and armored cars. There were 12 truckloads of troops flanking our limousines. The security extended even to the food they had replaced the caterer, lest our food be tampered with. After the luncheon, we were escorted to our cars. The limousine in which I was riding with the provisional president was an arsenal on wheels. The floor was piled with Submachine guns and revolvers, rifles, tear gas canisters, and ammunition clips. There were there was hardly room for our feet. I saw that the junta da 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 da. So that's a little bit of Dick Ni Nixon, the great progressive Dick Nixon. So this is going to be put into my progressive Republican category. So Dick Nixon is a progressive Republican. Dick Nixon actually was the last goddamn liberal leftist progressive socialist left wing, however you want to put it, president that America has had. The accomplishments of Dick, Nis of Dick Nixon just puts every other president, Ford, Carter, Bush, Reagan, Obama, Bush, uh, Clinton... Am I missing anybody? That puts him to goddamn shame. That's what Chris Hedges says too. Chris Hedges says Nixon is the last liberal president that we've ever had. So let's look into that. Was he the last liberal president? I want to talk about this specific incident. He wrote this book published in 1978, four years after he was after he had resigned his second term of the presidency. I saw several clips. So as vice president, as vice president, this is 1958. As vice president, he, there's an election coming up, right? And so he's going to ignore that Eisenhower did all the blockade and all the, you know, bombings and attacks on South and Latin America. He's going to pretend that they didn't do shit to communism or left-wing movements or the Chile, the you know, assassinating the president of Chile. They're gonna. He's gonna pretend that. Well, I guess that's gonna be in seventy three. He's gonna do that. Wait, maybe this was a revenge. I don't know. But uh, Dick Nixon, he was president from what sixty eight to seventy four. He was vice president in the nineteen fifties. Eisenhower, the Eisenhower generation. He was the fucking vice president of fucking Dick Eisenhower, and so. It's not coming up. A, a date's not coming up. He went to Monta, Monta Video, Uruguay. He went to all these different... He went to Peru. He went to Uruguay. Apparently, it was like a 11 or 8 country. He went to Ecuador. Flight from Lima to Quinto. He went to Caracas. And that's when, that's when shit took a, a turn for the worse. Like I said, this was just a PR stunt. He was doing a wreath laying ceremony because that's important hey why are you going to go to venezuela i need to lay a wreath at the foot of the monument of simon boulevard simon boulevard and so without further ado nixon venezuela 1958 it seems like it's probably 1958. Uh, all right, here we go. Are you paying attention, America? So make sure you go to Advance Auto Parts. He stood at attention. <laughs> like a psycho. <laughs> 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 
there's a part that they skip. When he walked in, they started playing the anthem again, and then they all started spitting on all over him and Pat Nixon. They had to go to the hotel and change their clothes, and then Nixon said he was going to burn his clothes. And then here's the car. Here's where they almost kill him. Apparently, this is an attempted murder right here. It is intense, right? Where's the motorcade? You got this big crowd. You got all these people all over the place. Do they have enough security? The uh, president at the time of Venezuela was going to allow some protests, but the protests overran the security detail. And they did. They were shaking the car. And they busted the window. They threw a rock at the window. They were hitting it with the window with a lead pipe. Nixon had thought of a moment when, you know, a lot of times mobs will flip a car over and then burn them. Which is true, but he didn't get hit. One of his friends got hit in the face with a rock and hit in a tooth and was bleeding all over the place. He had to go to the hospital. Good old Pat Nixon. Did Pat Nixon have a personality before Dick Nixon? Because it just sounds like, and then I just had dinner with Pat, and then I had dinner, it was just me and Pat. And no, I didn't have any more time for any meetings for the rest of the day. But there was one more important meeting after this had happened. So the reason why they had this overkill, the passage I was reading in the very beginning was Dick Nixon. And I'm going to read some more about what had happened afterwards. But the reason why this overkill had happened, Eisenhower freaked the fuck out. Apparently, Dick Nixon was like, oh, I about just got killed or whatever. And then Eisenhower didn't hear shit from Dick Nixon. And so he took it as, you know, a possibility that something terrible could have happened. And so Dwight D. Eisenhower, former, you know, World War II general hero and present um, president, 1958, he was the president of America. And so that was his number two he dispatched two companies of airborne infantry and two companies of Marines to the Caribbean to be in a position to cooperate with the Venezuelan government if assistance is requested. And so that's incredible, isn't it? That's like uh, Eisenhower's got, you know, Dick Nixon's back. But Dick Nixon, he was using it for PR. He was just using it for a fucking campaign commercial. It was one big advertisement. Hey, even though people hate us all around the world, for the most part, he was, you know, welcomed with wide open arms, uh, enthusiastically. He got, uh, several times, he got standing ovations and wild applause for, you know, shit he said here and there. But when he went to Caracas, Venezuela, what the fuck is going on? 1958, we've always, why have us in Venezuela always been at uh, odds with one another? It's freaking incredible. So that's why they had the overkill. Because, you know, it's like, shit, he basically had this successful, you know, it was supposed to be a boring trip. And all the other places, there were protesters or whatever, but nothing like this. And um, and so it started off to be a boring, you know, the seven out of eight states were boring. But then it got to Caracas, Venezuela. And apparently the government, they had to give the appearance that they hated the Americans. But they actually were like puppets to the America, to Nixon and to Eisenhower. Because, like I said before, they were allowing some of the mob to be fucking crazy. And then he got spit on, you know. I bet you there's video footage of that. If they got him, as soon as he landed in the airport, he's standing at attention when they were doing the American anthem, and then they did a Venezuela anthem, and then when he got close to the airport, to the building, all of a sudden, the damn uh, orchestra struck up the Venezuelan anthem again, and when the Venezuelan anthem was struck up again, there was a bunch of the protesters that were up in the balcony that was just spitting down upon them, so... It was like almost like Dick Nixon, I don't know the exact gesture, but was sitting there at attention, you know, um, showing respect for the the anthem of Venezuela, but being drenched. And he said it was brown stain, so it was like tobacco spit. It was like, uh, you know, that nasty chewing tobacco, so brown. It wasn't just like regular people's white uh, clear spit, but brown sticky tobacco spit. So that's why they had the overkill. So the day before, and also Dick Nixon, like I said, it's a big PR fucking stunt. So that's, you know, if it would if it would have been a boring trip, 
then nobody would have talked about it. And so actually Nixon was uh, pleasantly happy with the media and how the trip had turned out because of this. You know, everybody rushed. Are you okay? Are you all right? What's going on? He had something to talk about. He didn't get the brunt of the thing. You know, they got spit on or whatever. Somebody ran to him and they were like face to face and you know, uh, he thought he was going to yell or something, but he got spit on. So he got spit on a whole bunch of fucking times. And then he got that rock and, the, you know, and he could have, you know, almost got killed at that moment. I'm not going to deny him that. But his entourage, you know, was way worse. And then afterwards, this is why they have 12 truckloads of troops. They got the floor. The limousine had submachine guns and revolvers and rifles. Here, Nixon, you get all the damn weapons you fucking want, you pile of shit. The damn government was going to give him all the protection in the world. They had a curfew. They shut the damn town down. So, okay, go back to where you were going to go and do the thing before. And they shut the whole town down. They went ahead and had um, tear gas canisters. So they tear gassed the entire area. People were holding handkerchiefs, not out of, like, protest, but because it was all tear gassed. So the streets were almost empty because they tear gassed the shit out of the streets. And so that's the day after. That's the day after. The Empire shows up unexpectedly at your doorstep. The protesters somehow found out what was going on. And then the thing got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then, you know, he was able to get away. But frankly, it wasn't even... Anyways, Nixon. Nixon, progressive Republican. I'll talk more about his progressive this in a minute do i want to read any of this a large crowd came out to greet us when we landed at the national airport in washington eisenhower was there along with the cabinet and the leaders of congress the diplomatic corps trisha julie were waiting for us at the bottom of the stairs and they could hardly contain their tears of joy so you know okay dick nixon had a, a you know he pretended that <laughs> He had nothing to do with any of the policies that was going on with Latin and South America and almost got hurt. And then comes back and it's just this, um, you know, this big bully, right? This big fucking uh, wounded giant. And then a flea came and landed on my head. Oh my gosh, are you okay? Because how many times, yeah, you know, people have... You run into shit, but how many times do you have the president of the United States that has two companies of airborne infantry and two companies of Marines sent to the Caribbean just in case, you know, um, they had kidnapped you or did something worse to you? The positive reaction to the Caracas incident was naturally satisfying, but I never forgot how lucky we were to get out alive from what I had thought was going to be the most boring trip we'd ever taken. That's another thing. He acts like he's a good family man. He's always having these little private dinners with Pat. He put Pat's life in danger. He put Pat's life in danger. After they had drove out of the crowd and had, you know, gone 10 miles up or something, they pulled off to the side and he, he went and checked on her or some shit and saw that she was okay. So, uh, we'll get back to Dick Nixon, rattle some of this off. I'll start this off at the top of the next one. 